Hi, I'm Selena from Annie's Bookstop of Worcester, and I'm here with Larry Correa, um, who is a science fiction writer. And um, Larry, for readers unfamiliar with your work, could you kind of explain exactly uh, what you write? Sure. Um, I I am best known for the Monster Hunter International series, which is kind of a, an urban fantasy action adventure uh, where a, com a private company takes care of monster problems for fun and profit. Uh, but I also do the Saga of the Forgotten Warrior epic fantasy series. Um, and then I do, uh, just recently had a science fiction novel come out called Gunrunner uh, with John Brown. I uh, also do thrillers. Uh, I have a thriller series with Mike Coopery. And um, I've also done alternate history, uh, the Grim Noir Chronicles, Hard Magic, um, and a few other things. So I'm, I'm fairly prolific. I've written about 25 novels now. And over the last uh, decade and or 12 years and about 60, 65 or so pieces of short fiction that are uh, bound up in a couple different collections. So uh, I, I do science fiction. I do fantasy, urban fantasy, epic fantasy, uh, space opera. I've done a little bit of horror, uh, thrillers, a uh, little bit of everything. Comedy. I've done some comedies here. I've done Tom Stranger, uh, Interdimensional Insurance Agent is a comedy series for Audible. Uh, so I do a little bit of everything, and I, I really, really thoroughly enjoy my job. That's great. So how long would it take you to write a book in general? Uh, anywhere from like four to eight months. I think my average is about six months a book. I'll usually do a book, and then I'll do a couple pieces of short fiction, uh, and then I'll just jump into the next book, and I bounce around from series to series. Uh, right side of that is I never really get stuck or bored that way because I – I'm only working in one universe for so long. It's, and so it works out pretty good. So you write, you write um, more than one book at a time or more than one story at a time? Uh, only when I have to. Usually I'll do one book at a time uh, and then I'll take a, take a break, go work on something else and then come back and edit it, that kind of thing. I do a lot of collaborative works too. Those actually take a little bit longer, um, but I'll do a collaboration, then I'll usually do a, a solo novel and then I'll or two, and then I'll go back and do another collaboration just to kind of mix that up too. I just have a separate question I've never asked people, but when you're collaborating on a book, um, do you, how do you do that? I mean, do you like write one chapter and then the, the other person writes the next chapter or how do you, how do you work? Uh, depends, it, it, it entirely depends on who I'm working with. Uh, every author, we've kind of done it different. Usually uh, in my publishing house, I'll do, we'll, we'll have the senior author, will do the planning and the outlining. Junior author takes the, that outline and then we'll do the rough draft. And then they, then you kick it back and forth between the two of you. Uh, I've done other ones where I've done one chapter, they've done one chapter, or I write one character, they write a different character uh, point of view, and we bounce back and forth. Um, so it just kind of varies. Oh, yeah, that's yeah. interesting. Okay, that was that was just a personal question because I'm just curious about that. Okay, anyway, um, so what um, what can readers expect from your newest book? Which oh, um, so Monster, Monster Hunters, I guess. Yeah, Monster Hunter Bloodlines is the uh, eighth novel in the uh, regular Monster Hunter series. Then we got some spinoffs and uh, uh, other stuff in there. But Monster Hunter Bloodlines is a big action adventure, uh, urban fantasy. It's kind of a race against time, you know, the force of the battling the forces of evil. We have this big, you know, at this far into the series, um, we have like a big reoccurring villain. And this is a... a you know, ancient chaos demon come to destroy the universe. <laughs> and uh, the, so they, the heroes are working to stop him. Uh, they've clashed several times before. And uh, there's this alchemical super weapon, you know, created by Isaac Newton that uh, is up for grabs. And they're trying to get a hold of that so they can defeat the monster once and for all uh, is where we're at. And so we're um, pretty deep into the series. Uh, so if somebody's coming into Monster Hunter new, I would recommend start with Monster Hunter International. That's the first book. Uh, and we've got a couple other books that kind of can stand alone on that series, like Monster Hunter Alpha uh, is a really good one. And uh, but uh, yeah, so it's it's a big popular series. It's been around for 12 years now. A lot of fans. It does really well. Um, I enjoy working in this universe a lot. It's my love song to every horror movie and B monster movie flick ever made, uh, colliding with just gun nuttery and big action adventure stuff. So. Great series.
Okay. What do you think draws readers to these kinds of books? Um, for me personally, I, I like just a good, honest, fun uh, time. I, I am not a pretentious writer. I'm not a, uh, uh, I'm not a theme writer or a message writer. I just want, my goal is to entertain people. And so they're funny. They are action packed. They're interesting. I think they're pretty well written. <laughs> I like to have uh, characters that people can really get to know. Uh, I mean, if they feel like the characters are, if they feel like they could be real people to you that you could talk to and interact with, and I've done my job, uh, you know, the stakes are high. There's good versus evil. And, uh, you know, mostly we just, I, I pride myself on providing people an enjoyable, fun, uh, entertaining read. And, uh, and, and it's really, this series has really done well because of that, because people enjoy that. Mm -hmm. Well, what was your inspiration for the, the series? Oh, uh, actually it was B horror movies and I was on an internet gun forum and we were joking around about how if horror movies starred gun nuts, uh, then the horror movie would be a whole lot shorter and, uh, you know, Oh, it's the evil monster. Boom. Problem solved. Well, so I thought that was a hilarious idea, and I started experimenting around with that, and uh, Monster Hunter was the result, so I, I made it a, it's a family business from Alabama, and it's the Shacklesworth family, just handles monster problems, and they've been doing it for 100 years, and it's basically, it's just my people, it's, it's people who just handle business, and uh, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it, it really struck a note, it really struck a chord with a lot of people. Okay, what about Destroyer of Worlds? Okay, so that's my epic fantasy series. So it's the Saga of the Forgotten Warrior, the first one on that, Son of the Black Sword. Uh, Destroyer Worlds is the third book in that series. That's uh, That one's a little darker, a little more serious in tone. It's a world, um, uh, it's kind of loosely based on India, uh, uh, medieval India, and it's a real brutal caste systems. There's a all-consuming law in this uh, kingdom that kind of like, rules everything, and it's a... Uh, um, about a fella who's one of the enforcers of this law who discovers he's not who he always thought he was. And uh, things just kind of spiral out of control from there. It's a story of rebellion, uh, building and basically building a new country from scratch, uh, war, uh, chaos, <laughs> big magic system. Um, I, I, I really like that. that's the That's the series that, uh, like I said, a little darker, a little more serious. Uh, that's my one that I've actually won a bunch of awards for. It's critically acclaimed, mm -hmm. uh, but a lot of fun. Um, it, it's still just a big action adventure, uh, epic fantasy series. I was inspired a lot by uh, Robert E. Howard uh, and, yeah. uh, you know, going for just kind of that tough, uh, you know, that, that hardcore vibe there. And uh, that series has worked really, really good. Yeah, so Destroyer Worlds uh, has done great. Uh, that's, that's, a, that's a really good. There's two more there's two more novels left in that series so that's actually a five book series altogether oh wow okay um what kind of research went into writing um either one of those books that, that... oh i'm a research nerd um you know i i read a lot i i seek out a lot of folklore stuff especially historical uh things uh just weird stories <laughs> um basically I, I, I research a lot. I make a lot of notes. Uh, Wikipedia is a great place to start. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Terrible end. Yep. It is. And yeah, I kind of go from there. And uh, there's good ideas everywhere. And the cool thing about writing fantasy worlds is I can like break reality wherever I need to to make the story cooler. Uh, and so a lot of times I can use real world examples or a starting point and then tweak them to, you know, uh, uh, do that and like, uh, then I, then I have a lot of people that I call upon. Anytime I need somebody who is like a specific area of expertise, I'll, hide, I'll try to have readers that know that stuff really well. Um, so for like, um, for example, for Monster Hunter, if I, if I have a scene involving helicopters, I know a helicopter pilot and I, you know, have her check all my helicopter stuff to make sure I didn't screw it up, you know, as, as so on and so forth. I, I'm a stickler for getting my stuff as correct as I can. I still screw up. <laughs> authors we always do you can't know everything but i do try to do my homework uh, on everything i write to make it as good as possible and do you have a favorite research story oh gosh uh i, I don't know if i have a favorite research story so much as i have a lot of things that exist uh because of that um so like i'll be researching one 
and I'll come across a nugget of something else. Uh, so like, for example, in Monster Hunter series, I take a lot of the, the traditional fairy tale creatures and I kind of flip them on their heads. And at one point I was researching the gnomes from Scandinavian folklore. And, uh, you know, Western, the Western world, we think of gnomes as cute, adorable, little rosy cheek, chubby dudes, you know, with the little hats and the pointy hats. And they're just adorable little lawn ornaments. But I was reading the old school folklore stuff and it was like, no, no, they were mean. And it was stuff like you would, so a gnome would protect your farm and protect your family and protect your house, but you had to leave out sacrifices for the gnome. You had to leave gifts for the gnome. And if you didn't bribe the gnome sufficiently, they would burn your house down or they would kill your cows um and so basically i was reading this i started thinking okay this is kind of like an organized crime thing it's like the mafia you know where you pay protection money to the mafia and the mafia is like wow a really nice business you have here it'd be a real shame if something bad was to happen to it right and so what i did is i took the gnomes in the monster hunter series and i made them organized crime uh they're gangster gnomes and uh they they just are total thug life criminals and had a lot of fun with that in the series. The fans will love that. Um, so, you know, research, there's all these little things like that out there. But yeah, the gnomes are probably my, my single favorite one, I, I would have to say. I love that. So what was the biggest challenge in uh, writing and putting out um, either, uh, you know, either the Shorter of Worlds or the Monster Hunter series? Um, biggest challenge, honestly, is uh, just it's a lot of hours. Uh, it's a lot of work to create a novel. Um, you know, you're basically half a year sitting in a chair, uh, staring at a screen and thinking. And um, the further and further you get into a series, the more stuff you've outlined, the more you've kind of, you know, hemmed yourself in, the more you got to be careful you don't like contradict things you've already said. So you have to go back and reread your old stuff. Um, it's just a lot of effort. And uh, I don't really have a problem keeping the stuff fresh just because I write in so many different universes. So by the time I come back to a universe, I'm excited again. Uh, so I don't, I don't really get burned out of one world. So I don't have that challenge uh, so much, but it's, it's, it's just a lot of work. <laughs> it's a lot of effort to keep producing books like this. Uh, and I've been doing this, I've been doing this for about 12 years now and uh, uh, haven't burned out yet. <laughs> thing. Uh, People would not so, like that. <laughs> there are, you know, unique challenges on these two, but uh, just this work it's a job. It is a, it is a job. It is a hard job. Um, is there any one character that you loved or hated the most in any of your books? Oh gosh. Okay, so Monster on the Bloodlines, this new one that came out. I have a, I have this character who I've introduced to like I introduced him like seven books ago, um, and he's been a kind of recurring villain. He's a guy who um, he's a, he, you know he's mostly human. He um, has kind of been a thorn in the main character's side. Uh, he's just a jerk. And he's a snarky, rude dismissive know-it-all but he's also very good at his job he's just he's just you know it's this guy's an agent of the u.s government or was um he kind of handles monster stuff and uh i've been planning a big cool reveal twist with this character for seven books now and uh-huh. bloodline finally got to get to that uh which has been a lot of fun and but this is a character that i i love to hate uh, i love writing the guy because he's just such a jerk and he's such a, a lying dirtbag to everybody. Um, but I also enjoy writing the guy a lot. And I think that comes through in his personality. And so in Bloodlines, I finally got to, uh, you know, <laughs> get this guy's past out there. So so it's, it's like, there's not really a, uh, so I guess it's kind of a love-hate thing. Because if people hate the guy, then I've done my job. <laughs> so are you more of a, a plot writer or a character writer? You think? Oh, that varies. I actually just did an interview about that specific topic. That varies from story to story. Um, sometimes, I ha- sometimes the characters exist first, and then you build a plot around them. Other times, the plot exists first, and you wind up asking what kind of characters would be most interesting in this. Monster Hunter is primarily character driven. Um, mm-hmm. It's it's a character you know uh, driven series. Whereas uh, like the story of worlds is more of a plot driven series. Cause I had the basic um, idea for the plot in the world uh, before I had the characters. And I kind of introduced the characters uh, except for the main character. I introduced the, the rest of the characters kind of around asking like who would exist in this kind of world. So on that one, I flip a coin. <laughs> it's just whatever idea happened first. Okay. Sounds good. What can we expect from you in the future? Oh gosh. Um, I have a ton of stuff planned. 
Um, I am currently working on a new series that's coming out is uh, with an author named Steve Diamond. It's called Servants of War. It's a it's kind of think 1917 meets The Witcher. It's a World War One trench fantasy, basically. Yeah, so it's a world of dark fairy tale magic, basically the equivalent of the Eastern Front trench warfare. It's about a crew of guys that uh, uh, drive a not a tank, but basically a giant suit made out of dead golem parts. Um, yeah, it's it's nuts. Um, but I'm working on that one right now. There's uh, like I said, two more in the saga of the Forgotten Warrior. There's several more Monster Hunter novels planned. Uh, and I have another uh, hard magic trilogy uh, coming up too. So, and I'm also working on uh, two more anthologies uh, in the Noir Fatale series that we, those are uh, that I do with Casey Ezel. This one I edit uh, where there's short stories that are noir themed sci fi and fantasy. So, yeah, I got a lot going on. Sounds like it. Okay, now I have some questions for you about being a writer. What's your favorite part about being a writer on the whole writing and publishing process? Honestly, it's just, a, it's a, it's my job and I have a really good job. I love what I do. Um, I would do this for free, <laughs> for fun, uh, except the fact is I get to make a really good living off this. I, uh, I just enjoy the creative process. And I think I just blundered into like the coolest career possible for me. Uh, you know, I've done a bunch of different things over my life, um, some harder than others. This is just the coolest job ever. And so that's, I get to create, I get to create fun stuff all day and people enjoy it and I get to entertain people. So uh, it's just awesome. That's great. So what do you consider the most challenging um, part of the writing process and how do you overcome it? Um, that's a, that's a tough one. I would say the most challenging part is actually dealing with all the ancillary publishing industry stuff. Mm. But the actual creative process part is fun. Uh, actually making the work is fun. It's all the uh, extraneous uh, politicking and, and, and business stuff. I'm lucky I, I work for a really cool publishing house, Bay and Books. Um, they are great to work with. So that stuff is minimal there. It's just mostly industry wide and it's very political and backbitey and all this. I don't enjoy that part. Um, but I'm lucky in that I work for a really good publishing house that I enjoy. So that kind of stuff, don't have to worry about it too much. Great. So what has been your favorite adventure during your writing career? <laughs> you know, I've got to, I get to do these book tours and uh, that's a lot of fun, but my funnest, I guess I would think I'd call it an adventure would be when I, I did a book tour to Europe. Uh, and is my wife and I, and we went all over Europe and uh, did a bunch of different countries, but we got to stay in the Czech Republic for a while. And it turns out in Prague, I'm kind of like a, a, a rock star. <laughs> my book's too really good there. And so it was just kind of this amazing experience where we didn't speak hardly any of the language and very few people around us spoke English, except for we had, you know, a couple of people that did, thank goodness, they, they kept us from getting too lost. And uh, so it was just, that, that was a lot of fun. It was an adventure. Um, wow. but I, I get to have a lot of fun experiences because of, you know, fans of my, uh, work are in a bunch of different fields and industries. Uh, so I get invited to do a lot of cool stuff and have a lot of cool experiences because of that. And it's a lot of opportunities for me to learn stuff, uh, to put in future books. So yeah, that, I love that part. So what's the greatest lesson you've learned thus far in your writing career? Honestly, I would say, um, the best lesson I, I have that I could ask uh, something I could pass on to people too is be prolific. Um, keep creating. Uh, uh, that was advice I got out. I got from Kevin J. Anderson when I was starting out and I'd only written a couple books. Kevin told me, you know, the key to success is be prolific. Keep writing. The more you write, the more likely it is that you will create something truly awesome. And also the more you do this, the more practice you get, the better you get. And, um, and I feel like I've, I've grown a lot as an author as I've done, as I've done this over the last decade because of that, because I, I, I keep working and I, I keep producing. And I, that's what I would encourage all writers to do. If you keep working and keep producing, you'll keep getting better. And my next question also kind of goes into that. What piece of advice would you want to share with other writers? And that. Oh, yeah, definitely, definitely that. That's the best one. My second one that I would give people is that uh, for writers is treat it as a job. Uh, the biggest problem I see uh, writers fail is they treat it like a hobby uh, and they only work when they're passionate about it or they only work when they're inspired by their muse. 
um, that's really hard. And if you do that, it, your, your production is going to be hit or miss. And if you treat it like a job, you'll produce consistently, you'll work, you'll keep getting better, you'll sell more books, you'll have more fans, um, you know, success breeds success. And so the best thing I can say is, uh, so the best advice is be prolific. Second most ad best advice I can give is, is be serious about it and treat it as you treat it as your real job. Okay. Now, are there any groups or organizations or clubs that you'd recommend to other um, other writers that have helped you in your career? Um, not particularly off the top of my head. I'm actually um, starting a writing podcast uh, called Writer Dojo. Uh, we've recorded the first 14 episodes. Uh, that'll be going live here pretty soon. Uh, we're that's my attempt to kind of give back where it's just a, it's a podcast where me and Steve Diamond go through uh, nuts and bolts of the writing business and uh, writing advice, practical stuff. Um, as far as like uh, organizations, I, 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 I kind of lone wolfed it <laughs> into this. I didn't have a writer's group or anything like that. I don't really have a background. Um, so I don't really know what to say there. Uh, but, okay. Uh, yeah, yeah or, uh, you didn't have any like critique groups or any of that kind of thing either. No, no I, I I just started throwing my stuff out on the internet and then I self published my first novel. <laughs> oh, I didn't realize that. <laughs> yeah, it started out self published before I got picked up by bands. So um, no, I came in I came at this sideways. I didn't come up through fandom, uh, and so I didn't really have access to any of that stuff i just started writing for fun because i, I read a lot and kind of went for i didn't i did terrible at english in school i got an accounting degree <laughs> that's interesting <laughs> yeah I, I like i said i can't sideways you know i think that answered the next question i was going to ask you which is what is one thing that most people don't know about you <laughs> oh just <laughs> Well, yeah, well, the accounting thing, a lot of people, I mean, that, that is, because I made my main character in my Monster Hunter series a former accountant, just because I needed the most stereotypically boring and mundane job imaginable. Uh, it's accounting, because it's yes. all stereotype. It's actually kind of, I, I enjoyed you, auditing. I have to say, you do not fit that stereotype. <laughs> no, well, part of it, I was, uh, I was a military contract accountant. Uh uh, for a big chunk of that and so and then I was in the gun business and um, so so no I wasn't a normal accountant I don't think <laughs> no I don't think so no but I enjoyed it I enjoyed it a lot it was a great job <laughs> okay uh, so what is the one thing that most people don't know about you then um I, I don't know that's a hard one I'm kind of an open book <laughs> My life is, uh, I'm one of those guys that I, I don't, uh, I'm not a secretive type, so I just kind of just say whatever I'm doing. Um, but anybody who follows me knows that I'm a nerd, I'm a mini painter, I'm a, a role-playing gamer, I'm a video gamer, uh, I live out in the sticks, I have a dog, love him. <laughs> I've got I've got four kids, uh, you know, and live out in the middle of nowhere in the mountains of northern Utah, so uh, that's I, like I said, I'm kind of an open book. <laughs> okay. okay. Uh, you kind of answered a lot of my next questions, but I'm going to ask them anyway. Um, what, what is or are your passions uh, when you're not writing? And how do you make time for, um, for your things that you love, your hobbies and things that you love? Um, well, one thing I, I am a, I am a painter. I, I paint for fun, and I do that to kind of zen. Uh, that's how I, I get away from writing. Uh, that's how I uncork my brain. Uh, and I have I'll have a little workstation down where my family, uh, where the family room is, where my kids and wife watch TV. Uh, I will just paint. Uh, I'll paint minis while we're down there. Um, I'm actually pretty good at it. People keep trying to buy them from me, but I won't sell them because if I sell them, then it'll become work and not a hobby. And so. My wife can sell them all after I die. <laughs> uh, so that's what I do. That's, that, that's what I do. That's kind of my Zen escape, uh, uncork my brain from writing. I'll put something going in the background, uh, usually a, a, like a low budget horror movie or an audio book. And uh, I'll just paint for hours. So that's what I do. Oh, that's great. I, I, make, I don't really watch TV with my eyes. I'm doing something else as I do that. So that's, 
that's how I make time because that's the biggest time suck I think for most people. That's for sure. So um, what does your writing space look like? And um, what do you need to have around you when you're writing? Like, you know, do you need to have certain drinks uh, like or food or things like that? <laughs> uh, lots and lots of cooks here. Well, actually, you know, since we're on a Zoom call here, um, my workstation here is basically just a basic desk. However, I have a 1200 square foot office. That's my painting station over there. Um, so it's an office slash giant mega huge game room is where I work um and I I, I uh like I guess I've been doing this for a long time and so I, I know that I need I need a work base and so kill two birds with one stone so I can have like my game area I can have about 20 people over <laughs> for a game night if I need to and I've got terrain for war games and uh, all that stuff so it's pretty nerdy my, my workspace is pretty darn nerdy but it's very effective I love it. It looks so nice and spacey. <laughs> it's cool. <laughs> I, that's one nice thing about uh, uh, we had a lot of space. <laughs> <laughs> so um, the rest of the house, family, this is where I live. I live in this area. <laughs> so um, so you, you have, was that coffee that you showed me? Or was that water? No. Coke Zero. <laughs> Coke Zero. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I drink, a lot of, I drink a lot of Coke Zero. That's that's kind of my drug of choice. Okay. <laughs> and for caffeine addiction. Yep. Sounds good. Okay. And um, when you're writing, do you prefer music or silence? Or... Uh, I actually, I, I I usually have musical soundtracks. Um, mostly it's music uh, soundtracks for movies and uh, instrumentals. I find if stuff has lyrics in it, it will mess with me while I'm writing. Uh, but I have different uh, different playlists and like several thousand songs on Spotify. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm definitely a music writer. Okay. Um, and writers very often have, um, have furry or feathered or uh, otherwise non-human uh, companions with them. Um, and you kind of i heard you mention you had a dog um, I'm a dog. yeah uh, i didn't have a dog for many years when we were married we lived in the city and uh in the suburbs we didn't really have space and so once we moved out to the country we got a dog and uh so he's, he's faust to my crest i call him my crest he's a mutt i call him my kresnovian waffle hound <laughs> it's his breed he's a good boy uh yeah and he's currently not in the office but i i i block the door when i do interviews to keep him from coming in <laughs> i was gonna ask if he uh, helps you or hinders you when you're writing usually helps he just kind of comes and he'll lay on my feet which is nice uh but when he hinders depends on how bored he is <laughs> <laughs> or if he wants to go out or whatever right <laughs> yeah well it's summertime so my kids are home so he's downstairs hanging out with them because they're way more interesting than than dad who just sits and types that's boring yeah. okay that that does make sense but definitely <laughs> all right i just have two more questions for you sure. um one is where can people find your work um, aside from Annie's bookstop of Worcester? And I have to do this because it's a plug because we're the ones that are doing these interviews. So, <laughs> um, and I've, I've, I've signed it, Annie's. Um, I signed books there probably six years ago, five, really? six years ago. Ah, yeah. yes. Yeah. I I remember hearing about that. That's right. Yep. Um, and uh, you, if you want any of Larry's books, you can order them from us um, at uh, orders at Annie's books, Worcester .com, or you can call us at 508-796-5613. Sorry, I've just been on vacation. Um, and uh, anyway, where else could you get um People get well, but they're available everywhere books are sold. Um, also available in audiobook and ebook. Um, on uh, audiobook, though, the Monster Hunter Bloodlines has been delayed a month. Uh, that won't, so that won't be out until I think the second week of September is when that'll be out. So uh, yeah, production delays happen. But basically, anywhere books are stored, but Annie's is a great place to get your books from. Thanks. And my last question is um, how can we follow your work and share your awesomeness? 
Um, I have a newsletter. If you go to my blog, it's monsterhunternation.com. Uh, if you go to Monster Hunter Nation, um, there is a sign up there for the newsletter. The newsletter is just book stuff. Um, or you can follow my blog or I'm also on social media or my Facebook, even though I'm usually banned. <laughs> so I'll usually be, I'll be banned for a month. I'll be back for a couple of days and I'm currently back, but I was just got back. You know, I was banned for a month. So best place to follow me is my blog, monsterhunternation.com. And if you just want to keep up on the book stuff, uh, books and stories are coming out soon. Uh, just sign up for the newsletter. That's the best thing to do. All right, great. Well, thank you so much. We really enjoyed our conversation here. And uh, hopefully if you ever get to the Boston area again, you'll come and sign more books for us. Yeah, it was fun. It was the uh, last time I there was a fun signing. So thank you. Thank you very much for having me. All right, thanks again. Okay. And uh, we will be seeing you. <laughs>